Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Transformers Generation 1 review. And the bot we're taking a look at in this video is 1987's Autobot Target Master, Point Blank, and Peacemaker. Now before I get going on the figure review, I need you guys to do me a favor. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there on the bottom. That way you'll get notified when I come out with any new videos and it'll help me and my channel out tremendously. Now, Point Blank hit the toy shelves in 1987 along with his fellow Target Masters, Sure Shot and Crosshairs. He only appeared in the animated television show in season four, which was the three-part Rebirth series. And man, he was just a background character. He was barely used. And to my knowledge, I don't even think he had a line of dialogue throughout the whole series. And that's pretty much how they treated him in Marvel Comics as well. He appeared in issue number one of the Headmasters Limited series as one of Fortress Maximus's Autobot troops, and then he appeared later on with his Target Master Peacemaker when they underwent the Target Master process. Now, Peacemaker, he got more dialogue in the Marvel series. He was portrayed as kind of the leader of the Target Master weapons, so he had some speaking lines, and but that was it. I mean, he had like two panels. That was it. The same with old Point Blank here. He was a blink and you miss it character. So that's pretty much the history of this guy as far as the U.S. is concerned. I know he had a bigger appearance in the Japanese Headmaster series, but I'm not that familiar with that. I do promise one of these days I'm going to watch that series. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different with this review. I picked this figure up about a year ago off eBay. He's in great shape. He came with all of his accessories, but as I discovered when I was getting ready to start this series, he is lacking a lot of decals. The only decals he has is the ones up here on his shoulders, ones there on his side, and that's it. He's pretty, he's pretty plain as far as the decals are concerned. So I thought I would do a combination Toy Hacks Generation 1 figure review. I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to clean off the old stickers and apply some brand new ones. So now we'll take a look at Point Blank before the Toy Hacks decals, then afterwards and on to the figure review. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now the first thing we'll do is take a look at my Generation 1 Point Blank as he is. This is exactly how I got him off of eBay. He only has six decals. He's got the big red sticker here up front, black sticker on the side, and these stickers here on the spoiler. Same three stickers on the other side, six in total. Another issue he has is he's got these weird black specks all over him. It's there on the stickers, there on the front. The sides, I mean, I'm not sure what that is. It does not want to come off. So hopefully with my little restoration tricks, we can see if I can clean up, up a little bit. Underneath, kind of showing the robot mode, there's no stickers, no other issues. All the problems with this figure is in vehicle mode. Now granted, the issues aren't that bad, but I figure since he's missing so many stickers and I am a big Toy Hacks fan, I would go ahead and get a new sticker sheet for him. As most of you may know, this is how Toy Hacks started off. Back in the day when they were repro labels, they made Generation 1 decals so you could improve your figures. I'd say about 80% of my collection of G1s have been repro labeled. So now we'll go ahead and take this guy downstairs to my kitchen where I do my restoration work, and I'll show you briefly how I do that. Now, before we get started, I want to stress that you restore a vintage figure at your own risk. These are the things that I've been doing to my vintage toys since 2012. I've never had a problem, but you never know how an individual or a toy is going to react. So let me stress again, you do this at your own risk. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is remove these stickers. And the first step I always do I have to see how much I can remove just with my thumbnail. 
So you vintage collectors, you hardcore G1ers may turn away now. Get my thumbnail up and under that sticker. Problem is, I don't have that many or much of a thumbnail. Now, as you can see, I got most of the sticker off. There's a little bit of residue on the front here on the sides and the spoiler. Now I'm going to take my favorite sticker remover, Goo Gone. This stuff works wonders, and I highly recommend the spray gel. It stays in place better. So we're going to spray this on everywhere where there was sticker residue. Nice coating. Try my best not to get the rub symbol there. And I'm going to make sure the areas with that black spots have some goo gone on them as well. I usually take my fingers, rub it in. And now I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes, so what I'm going to do is take my thumbnail over the residue from the stickers, and as you see, that's coming off beautifully. Highly recommend you use your thumbnail. You don't want to use any tools or anything. You don't want to risk scraping the paint. Get that focus back on there. But that's coming off great. No issues whatsoever as far as the residues concerned. Now, where's those black spots? Let's see if those are coming off. Those are still on there. So that must be paint or something. I'm going to have to live with that. I may try something else here in a minute. But as you can see, looking at my thumbnail, the residue is coming off beautifully. And now we'll move on to step three. Now the next step in my restoration project can be a little controversial at times because I'm going to take this G1 figure and give him a hot, soapy bath. Now what I like to do is I use Dawn dishwashing liquid because Goo Gone is greasy and a type of oil, and Dawn, of course, gets grease out of your way. So let's go ahead and move this guy over here to the sink. Hot, soapy water. I've got a soft toothbrush right here. Now the first thing I'll do is we'll pop the spoiler off. It's one solid plastic piece. Get it in the water. And we'll just scrub it down. Make sure to get all that residue off. All the sticker residue, all the goo gone. That looks pretty good. We'll rinse it off here. And the spoiler is nice and clean. Now for the figure. Now I really don't submerge a lot of my Generation 1 figures in the water because of the sticker here, the rub symbol. And also, never do this with your electronic figures. You should have figured that out. But, get the water in here, and I go over the figure where the spots were, where the stickers were, and the goo gone. So we'll get him good and soapy, scrubbed all over. I keep my thumb, he's getting a little bit wet here, but I keep my thumb over that sticker. I've done this over and over again on countless G1s. I've never accidentally taken a rub sticker off. So get this guy all scrubbed up. Looks good. I'm not feeling any residue. Now we'll just rinse him off. And now we'll sit point blank out to dry. And once he gets all dried up, we apply the toy hacks. And now I have my Generation 1 point blank all cleaned and prepped for toy haxing. I've got my toy hacks labels right here ready to go and my official toy hacks tweezers. I highly 
recommend these tweezers. These are great for those little teeny tiny decals. Now, I always find the Generation 1 stickers to be a little bit of a challenge. Toy Hacks' modern stickers, they've got some great sticker mapping in order to find where to place your stickers. As far as the G1, there's one little picture and you have to do some deciphering. So what I normally do is use good old Google, find some images, and place the stickers accordingly. So let's get Point Blank all decaled up and get him ready for his Generation 1 Patriot Prime review. A few minutes later. And there we have Point Blank all toy hacks up. And man, does he look fantastic. He looks like he just came out of the box in 1987. I really wish I could have got those black specks off of there. But I guess I can say that's battle damage and he can kind of blend in with the siege line. One issue I had with this set, the Autobot stickers, the Autobot symbols right here, the ones that came with the set were a little too big. So when I applied them, they kind of hung over the edge, either on this side or over the wheel well or down here. But if there's one thing I have plenty of, it's uh, Autobot logo stickers. So before we get to taking a look at Point Blank, let's take a look at his target master, Peacemaker. Now Peacemaker, he's got a lot of nice molded details. Not much as far as paint's concerned. He's got paint on his face, and it's all white. There's no articulation at all with these or with any of the Target Masters. I mean, all they do is turn into a gun, and that's it. And turning into a gun, super simple. Fold the legs up over the head. There's weapon mode, of course, and there's his head. So he's, he's looking at his own feet while he's <laughs> ass-blasting you. But anyway, there is Peacemaker. Now you can attach Peacemaker to point blank via the roof. So now you have the vehicle in battle mode. Now taking a look at this car, this is a Cybertron, Cybertronic race car. I love the flame decals there on the side. He looks really, really good. Very unique looking vehicle. I love the cockpit, the whole, the front end. That looks pretty cool. The wheels are neat too. The rims don't move, but the tires around it, they do. So he rolls really, really well. A lot of nice molded detail on the figure. Of course, the stickers make it pop too. I love it. I love the looks of this car. Now, let's go ahead and get him transformed into robot mode. He's got a fairly simple transformation. The first thing you're going to do is remove the spoiler. Then you're going to take the back half. Flip over, forming the robot legs, if you hear. Nice ratchet there. And now, do a 180. Up on top, if you look, there's little pegs right there. So you want to pull up on the front of the vehicle, popping those loose from the doors. You're going to do that on both sides. Underneath, you're going to swing the arms up. Fold the doors in and bring these sections down. And then once they're down, you're simply going to, oops, excuse me, actually need to pull these out and rotate in place. Take the front of the vehicle, flip down, revealing the robot head. And there you have point blank in robot mode. And I really like this robot mode. I think he's really, really cool looking. I love the 80s style shoulder pads. And he's got a great looking head sculpt. Now, take note, in Marvel Comics and the cartoon, his head was drawn completely different. He has this little pointy part poking out, kind of looks like a quail. And from what I understand from the TF Wiki, he was originally drawn and animated due to some concept art, while his original head kind of looks a lot like Sideswipes. Now, as far as articulation goes for this figure, he's G1. He's pretty much a brick. He's got a knee bend, but both legs are connected, and that's mainly due for transformation. A lot of articulation in the arms. The arms can point forward by rotating the shoulders. They also have an elbow bend and a wrist swivel. So that's pretty impressive for a Generation 1 figure. Now, the spoiler he came with, you can display this a couple different ways. I've seen people place the spoiler here on the front, 
like that, but that gives him his prime armor. It makes him look like he's got one of those baby carriers on his front. I don't do that. I use mine as a shield. Place it in his hand. Where the wrist rotation comes in, you can actually rotate the wrist around. So he's holding it like a shield, like that. And that's how I display mine. You can also take Peacemaker, place it in his other hand, and now you have Point Blank all armed and ready for battle. And now for some size comparison, here is 1987's Point Blank with Peacemaker with Generation 1 Optimus Prime. Hasbro Generation Selects Ricochet with my custom Battlemaster Nebulon and Power of the Prime's Punch with his shoulders flared out. Everybody's hoping that we get a repaint, remold of this figure into a modern Point Blank. 1987's Target Master Point Blank is a fantastic toy and a great example of the Target Master gimmick. I just wish the Target Master figure itself was a little bit better. I love the robot mode on this figure, and the vehicle mode's not too shabby either. And big shout out to Toy Hacks. Their decal sets to enhance these old Generation 1 figures is phenomenal. So there you go, guys. 1987's Target Master Point Blank with Peacemaker. So, does a Generation 1 Point Blank with Peacemaker belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a great toy and a perfect example of the Target Master gimmick. Like I said, I just wish the Target Master figure was a little better. Now, this guy is going to set you back a few bucks because he is one of the only Target Masters, I think the only Target Master, that comes with an extra accessory, his shield spoiler. So if you are hunting one of him down, make sure he's got the spoiler, peacemaker, and of course the bot himself. Also, big shout out to Toy Hacks. You made this guy look fantastic. Kudos to you. You, you know you've got a loyal customer for life. And guys, I want to thank you for stopping by and checking out my video. Don't forget to like and don't forget to subscribe. Hitting that subscribe button won't cost you a dime, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. If you're needing some Patriot Prime swag, check out my merch store. I have the link in the description of this video. And uh, check out my series, The Sit Rep. I'm way behind on those, but if you want to catch up, it's where I sit and talk to fellow Transformer Collector YouTubers and we have a blast talking about those plastic robots back there. And I've had guests from all over the world, and it's always a good time. Guys, this is Patriot Prime. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great night.